Okay, this, uh, this application gives us a chance to peek into a multivariate normal distribution, and specifically we're going to think of a bivariate normal. So the, the multi and multivariate obviously means many normals, and bivariate obviously bi means two. So we have two normal distributions. Um, and we're going to plot their density functions. So we're, we have all this parameter bar here. Um, and then we have go, which means you're going to sample. And it's all, it's all pretty self-explanatory. So we're going to call the two normal distributions x and y. Um, we can adjust their mean, so mean of x, mean of y, we can adjust the variances, and then we can adjust their correlation. So, um, you know, obviously these are bivariate normal, which means they have some correlation. We're going to start it at a one half. Um, so we can adjust the, their marginal parameters, but then their, their correlation together. So let's go ahead and hit go and see what this looks like. It takes a second because the plot is a little complicated. Um, one disclaimer before we, we start working on this. Um, notice that just by the, the function of how the plots are laid out, right, the plots are rectangular, this x-axis is far longer than the y-axis. So you can really imagine almost stretching it, in, like imagine stretching the y-axis a little bit in your mind because it's it's rectangular. Like don't, uh, we, we're just used to seeing plots like this where the x-axis is longer. Um, so don't necessarily get tripped up by the fact that the y-axis is shorter in this plot. And, it, and that shouldn't matter too much, I just wanted to mention it. Um, okay, so here's the empirical density of x and y, and here's the analytical density, and below we have the two marginal distributions. Let's walk through what those mean. The empirical density is saying, okay, well here's my, I have a bivariate normal, one has mean zero, the other has mean zero, they both have variance one, and they have correlation one half. The empirical density simulates, you know, thousands of draws from that bivariate distribution and plots it, right? So each of these little points is a draw from this distribution. The analytical density actually goes and using the defined CDF, or sorry, the defined uh, joint PDF that we know for X and Y actually plots that joint PDF over, you know, from Y negative 10 to 10 and then X negative 10 to 10. And you can see like they look the same, right? Because the, the empirical is simulating from the analytical distribution, so they, they should look the same. If they didn't look the same, the PDS would, would be different and that we wouldn't be happy. Notice that the empirical distribution obviously doesn't cover, like it doesn't cover the space out here, whereas the analytical distribution covers the whole rectangle. That's because observing something like this would be extremely rare in the empirical. And you know, it, it, here, this in the analytical density, it's essentially zero out here, right? There's no, very little probability of getting a value of x that's negative eight and a value of y that's eight, right? Um, but so the, we don't actually observe it in the empirical distribution, but when we actually simulate, but in the analytical distribution, we can kind of define it and look at it. Um, and intuitively, like red means heat. So the the red spots are where X and Y like to be. So, you know, when X, X likes to be zero most and Y likes to, the, the hottest spot is zero, zero, which makes sense because they both have mean zero. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is, is change around the mean. So let's play with the mean of x. We're going to increase the mean of x, and let's see how this empirical density responds. So let's move all the way up to 2. It takes a second to, to run. So notice that kind of we similar, right? But it shifted over to the right. And that makes sense. Like everything is the same, the same variance, same correlation, but we shifted the mean of x over to the right, and that's intuitive. And Below, again, we're plotting the marginal distribution, so x is normal to 1, we plot that, you know, y is normal, 0, 1. They, these plots are less important, they're just showing you that these still are marginally normal, um, but this is the plot of them together, you know, like here's the x value and, and the y value, and we're plotting all of them. Um, so, it makes sense that the x, uh, when we change the expectation, moves over, and, you know, we can imagine to changing the y, and it's going to move down, right, because the mean of y goes down, and the analytical matches it, and, you know, we could sort of move them around. It's, it's basically a shifting of the of the distributions changing uh, the expectations, so that so that makes sense. Now let's let's try changing the variance. So I want to try ch changing the variance of x. Let's increase it all the way up to four, and notice how this changes. Okay, let's see. So there, so it's it's spread out, right? It's like much wider, and the analytical distribution is much wider. That makes sense, right? In the x direction, x has like more variance now, so it makes sense that it's kind of pulled out, imagine like pulling out a rope like in the x direction, and y, if we increase the variance, it should increase in the y direction as well. So there you go, we see like a, a big uh, pulling out. And, and again, think back to the first thing I said, it looks like there's more spread in x than y, because there's more distance this way than this way. That's only because the x-axis like on this graph is longer. If we, they're, they're not units wise, like physically, distance from here to here is longer than the distance from here to here. Like if we made this graph a square, then it would be totally symmetrical. So don't worry about the fact that the, you know, the spreads are different. Okay, so the last interesting thing we can do, let's bring our variances, let's make our variances, uh, we'll make them one, I guess. 
Um, last interesting thing we can do is changing the correlation. So this this is pretty cool. Right now the correlation is positive and we it kind of makes sense in the graph. Like when x is large, so when x kind of moves to the right, y is also large. The graph is still updating, so that's why it's changing a little bit. But that's why you see like this red dot being sloped like as a positive slope essentially. Like when x is big, y is big. And when x is small, y is small. So we get this positive slope. If we flip it to something that's very negative, you should see this reverse. So there we go. See, we see we see negative, it's going a different direction. When x is small, when x is negative, y is large, and vice versa. And you can see if we get closer to zero, if we're still negative but closer to zero, so let's see. Watch how the circle changes. So notice it's still negative, but it's becoming more of a blob, right? It's not as strong. So the correlation as it gets closer to zero, it's not as strong of, of a connection. Okay, so that, that kind of makes sense. The closer we get to zero, the more of a blob. And you know, same if we go in the positive direction, it's gonna be very this is gonna be very tight, right? Very tight relationship, positive relationship. But then when we go back down to one, and I'm doing it one by one, so it's gonna update slowly. Um, when we go back down to one, we kind of see sort of sort of this blob. So that makes sense. We we can kind of think how these distributions change the expectation, the variance, uh, and the correlation. I think the last interesting thing to do is um, look at the corner cases. And a quick note: we have a note up here that you know x and y are bivariate normal. They have this correlation. The analytical density that we use is not defined when correlation is zero or one, so we're not necessarily going to get a result um, for that. But you know, we'll we'll show you what it looks like. So we drag the correlation to negative one. Like we said, we don't have the analytical density; it's not defined. But notice the empirical density. It's a perfect line. You can see it's tough to see, but this area is red, the other areas are black. But it's a one-to-one -one match, right? Even if I change the expectation, this line is going to move around, but it's still a one-to-one -one match, which is the definition of a negative one correlation. And I could flip the line, I could have it go the opposite direction if I have a positive correlation. You know, even if I change the variance, the line is going to change, but it's still a one-to-one -one line, right? Yeah, okay, so that's good. I get, and we can also actually, this is, it's interesting if we, Let's, let's do this. So we set the variance is equal to zero here, right? When the variance is equal to zero, x and y are constants. So if the variance of x is zero and the mean of x is 0 0.6, then x is just 0 0.6. And if the variance of y is zero and y is negative one, then y is just negative one. So this, this joint density is just one point. It's 0 0.6, negative one for y. And you can see over here the density key is just, it's just one. The density is one because that's the only point. You can see these histograms down here. R doesn't know what to do because there's only one point, so it just you know points this big blob. It's it's a single point. And you can also see like if we have the variant. Let's make the covariance uh, non non not one. Um, if we set the variance of x to be zero and the variance of y to be positive, so now y is a random variable, we can see that x is fixed, right? And if you kind of look at this, and this is, I think is really interesting. Let's do the other way. Let's do x have a variance. If you kind of look at this you know, this marginal distribution of x is essentially drawn on this empirical density. It's just drawn in terms of color. So here we, we indicate that x likes to be in this area with height, right? The bars are higher, um, but in the, in, in the heat map, we indicate it with heat, like it's very red instead of high. So this is just mapping on, right? Like since y doesn't change, we're just graphing x. And realizing this, like realizing when y is constant and looking at like this is the density of x kind of helps you to think about when y is not constant. Right, so when we have this sort of graph, we can still think of you know it changes with x and y, but we can still think of just like marginalizing out, marginalizing out y, and thinking about the distribution of x in terms of the x-axis. So, anyways, I think this is a pretty fruitful uh, app to kind of get your hands around what's going on, helps you think about correlation, covariance. Again, don't get tripped up by these uh, you know these these act these graph dimensions. If you want, you can probably fiddle with your, your window to make it look more like a square. Um, but otherwise, you know, play with the expectations, the variance, and the covariance, and sort of see how these things change.